Hey all, Sid has already taken his first step into the world of computers. He explored networks and its type, learned about switching techniques and understood transmission media. But as he went deeper, a new set of questions came to his mind. How do devices actually connect with each other? What rules makes this communication possible? And most importantly, how do we keep our data safe in the connected world? That's when he started exploring the next phase of computer networks. In today's video, just like said, we are going to learn about different network devices like routers, hubs and switches. Even we will get an idea of different network protocols that act as a rules of communication. Important networking terms and concept followed by key network security concepts and terminology and of course different network security threats that we must be aware of. By the end of this session you will have a clear idea of how networks are built, how they communicate and how they stay secure in real world scenarios. Here is the first important topic that we are going to discuss is network devices. You can see here the list of the network devices. Out of that we will be concentrating on modem, hub and switch. But we will be going through other devices also but in short. The first network device is modem. The word modem is made up of two words modulator and demodulator. What is the use of modem? It allows you to connect and communicate with other computers that too through telephone lines. Modem can be internal which is fixed inside the computer or it can be external which is connected externally to the computer. Look at the process of modulation and demodulation. At the sender's computer, digital signals will get converted to analog and this process is known as modulation. Whereas at the end of receiver computer, the analog signal again will get converted to digital and this process is known as demodulation. Alright then, let's remember what is modulation, digital to analog conversion and the reverse process is demodulation, analog to digital conversion. The second network device is RJ45, registered jack 45. Look at the diagram, it is an 8 wire connector. Majorly used in Ethernet networking, it provides 10 Mbps of transfer rate. The third is Network Interface Card that is NIC. It has a unique address called MAC address. As it is a network device, it is used to connect computers and server so that we can share data over the network. Moving ahead to the next network device that is Ethernet Card. Ethernet Card is a type of Network Interface Card. For connection, it uses coaxial or twisted pair cables. It serves as a bridge between computer and the network. Data transfer rate is up to 10 Gbps. Have a look at the next network device that is hub. Hub will have multiple ports so that we can connect multiple computers. Remember one more point that hub broadcasts the message to all the nodes in the computer. But only target node will receive the message and others will ignore it. There are two types of hub, passive and active. Passive hub will allow to pass signal from one computer to another but there will be no change in the signal. Whereas in case of active hub, it amplifies the signals. The next important network device is switch. It is just like hub but it is called as a smart hub. Obviously, it is used to connect devices over a network. Alright, let's discuss about the next network device that is repeater. Over a long distance, the signal will get weakened. For that, we need repeaters. Repeaters will amplify the signals and restore it. For that purpose, repeaters will be installed along the way. Proceeding to the next one that is bridge. Bridge is a device which is used to link two networks together. In real life also, you know what is the use of bridge. Here also the same concept is applicable. It can connect multiple smaller LANs to a larger LAN. The next network device is router. It is just like bridge but it can handle different protocols. Where data is shared from one network to another, the network can be of different types. Here is one more network device. It is used to connect this similar network. It connects different types of networks together. Finally, we are at the last network device that is Wi-Fi card. We use Wi-Fi card for PC for our personal use. In this way, we studied 11 network devices. Moving ahead to the second important topic of this chapter that is network protocol. Protocol is nothing but rule. When we share data over the network, we need to follow certain rules that is nothing but a protocol. 
Here are the common protocols we will be studying HTTP, FTP, TCP IP, SLIP and PPP. And for forwarding mail, here is the list of the protocols that we are gonna use. IMAP, POP, SMTP and HTTP. Let's discuss the first protocol that is HTTP. Description is not that much important but remember the full form. HTTP is a set of rules. What is the use of HTTP? It is used for transferring hypertext. Hypertext can be anything, text, graphics, image, sound or video. Here is one more version of HTTP that is HTTPS. It is called as a secure version of HTTP. That's why in this HTTPS, S stands for secure. It is secure because it transfers data in the encrypted form. The second protocol is FTP that is file transfer protocol. It is used for exchanging files across internet. The third important protocol is TCP IP. TCP means transmission control protocol and IP means internet protocol. From these IP addresses we know why we use to identify the target computer over the network where we are sending the data. And TCP part provide the reliable delivery of the messages. Moving ahead to the fourth protocol. SLIP means serial line internet protocol and PPP means point to point protocol. Here SLIP is for delivering IP packets over dial up lines whereas PPP is used for transmitting IP packets over serial line. That's why PPP is more developed than SLIP. Now let's discuss some of the protocols that we are going to use while sending email. The first one is IMAP Internet Message Access Protocol. This is used for accessing email from the server. It holds the email for the user. The second one is POP3, Post Office Protocol 3. Keep in mind the full form of the protocols. It allows user to access mailboxes and download messages. The third protocol is used for email is SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. When sender sends mails to the recipient, this protocol is used. The fourth protocol is HTTP, even we will be using it for email transfer. It is used for composing and retrieving mail. Alright then, let's move ahead to the next topic. Here are some of the wireless and mobile computing technology. Look at the list of the technologies. Out of this, you know what is SMS, chat and video conferencing. Even we are familiar with these different generations. Okay then, let's start discussing the first wireless technologies that is GSM, Global System for Mobile. Let me tell you once again, definition is not important. Remember full forms. It is a mobile communication standard used to transmit mobile voice and data services from 2G onwards. For communication in mobile, we use SIM card. The full form is subscriber identity module. SIM is nothing but a tiny chip. With that, we will be getting one unique phone number. It has memory, processor and ability to interact with the user. The second one is wireless in local loop WLL. This is implemented where subscriber is connected to the exchange through radio link instead of physical copper wire. The third technology is GPRS. The full form is General Packet Radio Services. You know the usage of GPRS we use in mobile device for transferring data between mobile device and internet. Here are the different generations of wireless technology. It is started around 1980. Followed by 2G, it is launched in 1990. The next version is the enhanced version of 2G that is 2.5G. The next generation is 3G. It is introduced in 2000. Then in the late 2000, we got 4G. It provides faster data rates. Even you can stream high quality videos on mobile devices. We know the latest is 5G. This is the fifth generation of wireless communication technology. And the provided speed is almost 100 gigabytes per second. With this, you can download ultra high definition videos and access the internet at the lightning fast speed. Here are some other options with which we can communicate. SMS is short message service through which we can send or receive short messages. The second one is chat. In real time, we can send the textual message. Followed by video conferencing. It's a two-way video phone conversation in which there can be multiple participants. Here is one more important protocol that is voice over internet protocol. Remember the full form. With the help of this technology, we will be communicating through voice. 
it's just like a whatsapp call now let's discuss some of the terms and concept related to inter networking these are quite well familiar terms the first is www full form is world wide web it is nothing but a set of protocols that we will be following to access any document on the internet the second is telnet full form is teletype network it lets you to log in to the remote computer system what's the web browser it is used to display web pages here are some of the examples of web browser any two names are sufficient google chrome and microsoft edge the next term is web browser it is a www server it will give response for the request made by the browser the fifth term we are going to discuss is web page web page is nothing a document on the internet then what is website it is nothing but a collection of web pages just like book it is a collection of pages moving ahead to the next important topic url full form is uniform resource locator it is a unique address of the resource available on internet look at the format first we are writing the secured form of http that is https it is a protocol followed by the domain name and here is the path of the particular resource or particular web page on the internet we know that now url consists of three parts protocol domain name and path what's the domain name it is a name or address of the server domain name will have two parts first part is website name and the extension here are some of the extension what is web hosting it is nothing but uploading the content on the internet so that it is available to any browser client here are the different versions of the web now let's talk about the next important topic that is html the full form is hypertext markup language it is used to design web pages we can include text images and other media also it has fixed set of tags with the help of which we will be designing the web pages there is one more type of markup language it is called as xml extensible markup language in case of html we have predefined tags but in case of xml there are no predefined tags we can define our own tags HTML displays data which is static but with XML you can design your dynamic content remember two differences you will be getting question like this here is a variation of HTML that is DHTML dynamic HTML in this we can compile HTML CSS and JavaScript to design web pages we design web page but we need to add some functionality to it for that we will be writing scripting So writing script in the web page is known as web scripting. It is nothing but a list of commands. The famous scripting language is JavaScript. There are two types of scripting: client side and server side. The scripting which we do at the client end is called as client side scripting, and the scripting which we do at the server side is called as server side scripting. We are sharing data over the network, so it's our responsibility to protect it. So here are some of the protection mechanism authorization authentication biometric system and firewall the first mechanism is authentication in which we are verifying the identity of the user for that we can accept some credential from the user and validate them the second concept is authorization it's the process in which we will grant or deny access to the user based on the identity of the user Generally we will be doing this with login ID. There are some more protection mechanism. Here is biometric system with the help of which we can identify a person using the person's body's unique aspect like fingerprint or retinal pattern. One more option we have to install firewall. Firewall comes both in hardware format and even in software form. It is used to prevent unauthorized access. So in this way we studied four types of protection mechanisms it's time to discuss some terminologies related to network security first is cookies it is nothing but a text file or message which server will transmit to the browser so that they can keep track of the user's activity based on it only we will get suggestions the second term is hacker hackers are nothing but people who will try to hack our device but with good intention Then what's this term crackers crackers are also people but they don't have good intention with some bad motives they will try to hack your system now you understood the difference between hacker and crackers 
here is the fourth term cyber law cyber law is nothing but a legal aspects of the internet and www now we are going to discuss some ways with our system will get infected first is virus virus is nothing but a program which requires a host just like a biological virus without human body virus cannot spread in the same way this program also needs some device and we know the main characteristic of the virus it will replicate here are the types of viruses file infector and boot sector virus here is the famous example of virus trojan horse read the story behind it it's very interesting this is also nothing but a program it is harmless but deletes the file or damages the file the first category of malicious program we saw that is virus here is the second type that is worms it is also a malicious program malicious means harmful and just like virus it can replicate too then what's the difference it doesn't require host moving ahead to the third category of harmful programs it is called as malware this word made up of two terms malicious software obviously it will have some harmful intent the first is spyware as the name suggests it will spy on your activity and can gather information like password pin and banking information the second type of malware is adware it is also an unwanted software responsible for displaying the ads to your computer what's the third one ransomware you know the meaning of ransom it is also a type of software using encryption it will made your system data inaccessible and to unlock it you need to give some ransom here is one more harmful program that is key loggers it can be in the form of hardware or software that keeps track of your key strokes as you type anything it will get recorded we studied some harmful softwares now we will study some network security threats The first one is snooping. It refers to opening and looking through the files in an unauthorized manner. The second is eavesdropping. It's an attack in which attackers gain access to the communication medium and listens to the communication and gets the information. So attackers through your communication line can get your personal or confidential information. The third attack is known as denial of service (DoS). It is a type of cyber attack which prevents the services to the intended users. What about other intrusion attack? It is a illegal activity carried out in a digital network. So be alert and be careful while using internet. Don't share your personal information or bank or credit card information to any unknown person. So in this way we are confident in computer networks just like seed in the next video we will solve py quiz on computer networks to sharpen our preparation for the board exam so stay tuned and don't forget to like share and subscribe for more helpful lessons